In medieval Europe, the landed nobility and wealthy merchants lavished money on the church, which in turn built magnificent cathedrals and monasteries. That tradition survives in today's America. Only, the favored recipient of all that giving is now academia. Sometimes the gifts are tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. People give for many reasons, because they have fond memories of their time on campus, to enhance their school's reputation, to advance science through research, and much more. But is all this generosity going to the right places? How much bang for their buck do small donors get? Is it possible even that donations by conservatives are being used to advance agendas and ideas that they detest? Hi, I'm Shannon Watkins, and this is A Higher Education Moment, a video series presented by the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal. Today, we'll look at the world of college donations and endowments. Many of the country's top colleges and universities are rolling in money, with more than a million dollars per student in their endowments. Harvard University has an endowment of $36 billion, Yale has one around $25 billion, and Stanford has one around $22 billion. This begs the question, how much good can your annual gift of $500 or $1,000 do? Large donors giving millions of dollars can craft their gifts to suit their intentions and the school's top officials will be open to their ideas and complaints. For most donors, though, all they are likely to get is a form letter and a 15-second handshake with a school administrator at an alumni reunion. Although they may be able to target their gift for a specific building or scholarship project, usually their money just goes into a general fund to be used at the discretion of the administration. For conservative alumni and donors, the problem is much bigger than a lack of influence. The money they give may be used to promote ideas and a campus culture that conflicts with their deeply held values. It is irrational to fund your opposition, but many conservatives do just that. Why? Well, they do it for many reasons. Most likely they don't realize how much their school has changed since they attended. College has long been a place where young people tested boundaries and explored different ideas. For earlier generations, it didn't seem to do much harm and graduates went on to have good lives. But today, we are fighting a culture war with extremely high stakes. The schools themselves sometimes drive students toward radical ideas and hedonistic lifestyles. Administrations often deny the importance of free speech and exposing students to multiple viewpoints. You only have to look at voting patterns and the recent midterm elections to see the effects. College students turned out in droves to vote for far-left candidates. To write a check to a college without any strings attached is a self-defeating act. And unless you have lots of zeros on that check, you may not be able to attach any strings. Giving money to a college administrator without oversight is like giving a credit card to a teenager with no control over how they use it. So what can you do besides stop giving good money after bad? Quite a few things, actually. For one, there are several dozen colleges that are explicitly conservative or traditionally Christian. They won't turn down your money. There are also lots of small colleges that are so strapped for cash that they may consider making big changes to improve their fortunes. Small and mid-sized donations can get you access to key people at such places. If you think about it, in today's polarized political climate, in which grassroots conservatives are just starting to flex their political and economic muscles, a college could prosper by branding itself as a traditional or free market alternative to liberal mainstream academia. That has certainly worked for Hillsdale College, which has an endowment worth $350,000 for each student. You can also look for explicitly conservative organizations on campuses to help out with a few dollars that would be greatly appreciated. They can be student groups, lecture series, or conservative or free market centers or institutes. And of course, you can give to one of the many organizations that are fighting to reform academia and serving as watchdogs. These include the National Association of Scholars, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, and my particular favorite, the Martin Center for Academic Renewal. So when it comes to giving to colleges, don't just blindly give to your beloved alma mater. 
make sure your money does what you really want it to do. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you wish to comment or learn more, feel free to contact my colleagues or me at www.jamesgmartin.center. Thank you.